So, any questions? Okay, that's the end of that. <laughs> I'm going to think about it for a second. Are there any questions? Uh, I, I would like to know something about um, maybe your view on how important it is to be, uh, no, because that is also a close one, yes. Um, how important is leadership? And can you say something about that aspect of being a chorus director? What is your view on that? Yes, I can. Yeah, yeah, I hold workshops on this very topic. Um, it's hard to, you know, put into one little capsule so that you, know, you can all understand it and take it in on a small, you know, small amount of time. But overall, each one of you has an idea of what you want musically for your chorus. I'm not talking about scores, or medals, or anything like that. I'm talking about musically. If there were no competitions, what would you want musically for your chorus? That's the first question you have to ask yourself. Do you know what you want? If you don't know what you want, you can't lead people. Because you have to know where you're going. Even if you don't know where you're going, you have to at least know what's over there somewhere. People in your chorus will believe in you more if they see that you are leading from a place of believing in something greater than yourself in your own life. <coughs> if it's because you want the gold medal, it'll be like herding cats. You'll be trying to make them do what you want and people see when your ego is over involved. They know it and they resist it. If you've got some kind of a higher purpose that's greater than you, and you are passionate about that, that will be attractive to them. You can't make them do anything. You can only <coughs> attract them to it. And you have to do that by example. That's the basic. So I would say the first thing that you need to do as leaders is to <coughs> discover what your vision is and what the difference between a vision and a goal is. A vision is something that you can't quite see, but you can sense. You, you can use all the musicianship and spirit in you to sense that there is something greater that you're going after musically, and you're gonna try everything to get to that greater musical thing because that is your passion. A goal is, let's score 80 this year at contest which ends as soon as you score 80 at contest. By the time you get to your vision of musical excellence, you've acquired so many skills, there's another vision of musical excellence. It gets deeper and deeper and deeper. It never ends. It never ends. That is what you want your chorus to see. You want your chorus to believe in that. In my chorus, we rarely talk about goals. Rarely. I mean, we know that they're possible. It's possible to win, or mm -hmm. it's possible to come in the top ten because we're singing really well. And, you know, of course we want to do those things. But more than anything else, my chorus wants to do something that has never been done on the international stage before for the sake of the audience. They want to go beyond anything, any musical thing that they've heard on the stage. They want to go past that. They want to be... They want to explore what musicality is that doesn't have a score attached to it. What's beyond 100? There's something out there. We don't know what it is, but it's really good, and it feels great to sing it. And you know what it is. You can't, you can't touch it. But when it happens to you, you feel it. So our, our main goal within the chorus is to make sure that we have all of the technical shit out of the way so that people in the audience aren't disturbed by it and they can just get the energy, the spirit, and the music. That's why we do technique, not to score points. Mm -hmm. So if you're coming from that point of view, it will change the way you view yourself as a leader. The choices, every choice you make, even if it's just somebody from your chorus coming up to you and saying, the person behind me on the risers isn't singing the right notes. It's making me insane. 
Well, if you're a goal-driven director, you'd probably be thinking, well, I've got to get a, a program in place to make sure that people like that don't slip through the cracks and you know they're not on stage because they don't know what they're doing. But if you're a vision-driven person, you're thinking to yourself, nobody gets left behind. They deserve to really enjoy this music too. Let's help them learn how to enjoy it on a higher level. And if they're afraid of it, let's help give them the tools that they need so they don't have to be afraid of it anymore. So they can be part of the team too. Because really, wouldn't we want them there to experience standing on the international stage in front of 10,000 people? Wouldn't we want that for them? We'd want that for ourselves. Why wouldn't we want that for our, our neighbors standing beside us? And I would say to that person, well, what have you done to help them learn the right notes? It's your chorus. You expect me to fix it? It's your chorus. I'll direct it. It's your chorus. It's our chorus. What are you going to do to solve this problem? Now, if they are, if they have bought into the vision, they will say, all oh, right, maybe I can help them. The problem is that they can't read music, but I can read music. Well, okay, what are you going to do? Are you going to help them read music? Teach them how to read music. It's, it's not that difficult. Just teach them how to read music. Make the effort. Do you expect that she should make the effort for you? <coughs> That's what I'm do. So why don't you be generous instead mm -hmm. of selfish mm -hmm. and do this thing? Mm -hmm. Because we go together as a package and no one gets left behind. Always make the mistake of generosity. <laughs> You won't regret it. But like I said, you know, the most expensive thing in the world is regret. It costs a lot. And if you're standing on that stage, knowing so and so isn't standing on that stage because you didn't take like half an hour a week for three weeks to help them be there, at a spiritual level, how can you feel good about that? How about being bitter and complaining about them so they can get out of the way? So that's, that's one thing. The other thing about leadership is in your audition uh, process. Um, once you have vision in place, it's really important that the people that come in for the audition get the vision from the beginning. They have to know what it costs. They have to know what you're about. They have to know what's expected of them. They have to know how they're going to be treated. They have to know what you expect of them. They need to know these things to, to feel safe and secure. So when like 30 people come in for our guest night, <coughs> the first thing I do is I voice place them. And if their voice doesn't fit the barbershop sound, I tell them, you're a great choral singer, but it doesn't work for the sound that we're going for, especially because we're a smaller chorus, and I'm sure that everybody here comes from a smaller chorus. So don't take in bodies just because you think they're going to make a difference. It won't make a difference. It's just one more thing that you don't have the resources to fix. Mm -hmm. Bring in the people that can complement, not complicate. Mm -hmm. So you get past the voice placement and you've got the right kind of people. And then the next thing you do is you take them and you sit them down. And I literally do this on the first rehearsal night. I I let them hear the chorus, they get a sense of it, and then I take them out and I talk to them about the vision. And I say, this is how we roll, this is what we do, I expect of you these things, and I will kick your ass. But, you will learn to like it, because if you want esteem, you have to do esteemable things. If I say, oh that's good enough to you, your head will hear, isn't she nice? She's cutting me some slack. She's giving me a break. I can sing in this chorus. If I say to you, you need to do more of this in order for that to happen. You want that. You must do these things. You might think, well crap, she's really hard. She's really hard. But your heart will hear, she believes in me. The heart always hears when you believe in them. And it means you're challenging them to their next stage. They might complain from their head, but the heart knows that I wouldn't ask you to do these things if I didn't think you could do them. I believe in you until you believe in you. 
And by the time you believe in you on that level, I'm believing on you on the next level. And I'm going, come on. And if they get that sense from you all the time, they'll follow you anywhere. And then make, make sure that you've got um, a solid audition process with both of your contest songs. And listen for three things. Fourth, well, one is an observation. Listen for three things. Do they have a sense of rhythm? Do they have a decent tone? Do they have a good ear? Can they hold their part against four people, like in a quartet audition? On two difficult songs, they're going to make mistakes, but you want them to, because you want to see how they recover. You don't want to know how they do it right. You want to know what that happens if it goes wrong. Do they have the skills to make it right if it goes wrong? That is valuable. The other thing you want to know, know is, are they teachable? So over that period of time that they've got, like in our course, they've got four weeks. We put them in rehearsal quartets, and we have uh, our section directors follow them through the process, coaching them every week. And if they are showing improvement based on the coaching, then we know that they're coachable. Because I've had a couple people come in that were really good singers, and everybody else went like this, and they just didn't change, and it became a problem. They were good. But they were good enough. Mm -hmm. Not for my chorus, right? So you want to keep, the idea of this isn't to be hard, but it's to keep unity in your group. Mm -hmm. On all levels, non-musical and musical. Mm -hmm. You want to keep unity in your group. Do your singers a favor and bring in people that are at their level and have the ability to climb with them. In small groups, we just do not have the resources to bring in somebody here and hope that they're going to make it up there and continue to grow. Mm -hmm. In whose spare time are we going to make this happen? Mm -hmm. There might be another choir for them. That's okay. <coughs> suggest another. Suggest another choir. Mm -hmm. No problem. No mm -hmm. problem. You want people that are vocally, you know, with the vision, with the voice and they've got the willingness. And I'll tell you what, by the time they pass their audition, they know they've had to work for it. They've earned their spot in that choir. They've earned their spot in my chorus. And they will do anything to protect it. Mm. Anything. Any one of the people in my chorus will do anything to protect her spot on the risers. Because she worked for it. She knows she's worth something now. It wasn't just given to her. So there's a certain sense of self-esteem that comes. So those are some thoughts around leadership. Any questions about that? Yeah. I have a question about yeah. that. I mean, we have different uh, levels within the course, and it's used, the result is that we split into three groups. OK. Um, Good. Yeah. As long as there are three equal groups. Great. Not three courses. Yeah, not well, just <coughs> same course. Same course. Just one group <coughs> stayed. Okay. That was left. But to add on, to, to grow and to add on singers on that level, I find it quite difficult. It, it is. Yeah. So. Yeah, well, you don't have to be big to be good. Mm. My course, we came seventh in the world. Where there was thirty-eight of us on stage. I know. Thirty-eight. Yeah, but, but you know, you, you got to build, you got to build where you, how do you eat an elephant? One bite at a time. One bite at a time. You get some fresh meat in there, it will change everybody else's perspective of what they do. One new person is like, oh, they'll work harder. The old members will work harder because this like new eager person is in there. Ooh, better step it up and they will work harder. Just one little seed here or there. Or if you're having a hard time attracting younger members, start a young woman in harmony program. Get into schools, grab people that are, you know, spray painting buildings, have nothing to do, and say, Can you sing? Sing here. <laughs> you know? Ask people in the grocery store. If I am if I'm out shopping or something and I hear somebody that has a resonant voice, I'm like, Can you sing? <laughs> Not a chorus. You sing. Come sing in our chorus. You sing. I really, I do. I mean, I'm shameless. 
but it, it's not because I'm trying to attract more members. I want the right kind of member. <coughs> because it's the right kind of member that blends with the members that I've got, or enhances the members that I've got, that are going to help me build a stronger chorus, not a bigger chorus, but a stronger team, a stronger unit. So, um, and the more you challenge the people in your chorus to believe in their next potential from an education standpoint, <coughs> the more people believe. That's a great way to rebuild your chorus. Because the new people that come in will see you working at this higher level, and they'll go, that's attractive. If they come in and hear a whole bunch of people singing at a lower level and there's not, no juice in it, they'll leave. If they see you operating at a higher level, they'll go, hey, maybe there's something to this. And they'll stick around. I'll let them leave. Yeah, you know what? The chorus that I direct now had, um, there was, I think, 118 or something of them. Um, and the director left, and the music team left, and all the management team. It's just like, they made this insane demand on the people in the chorus. And uh, so, anyway, it, it boiled down to about 65 people. And uh, they asked me to be their director. So I moved from Canada. And I started directing this chorus. And I put in place all of these, you know, things that I've been telling you. And within three years, we were down to 22 people. 12 of which were from the original 65. We scored like B minus 524 at regional. And I finally had out with the management team. And they're like, you're working too hard and people are leaving. I'm saying, I'm just doing what needs to happen for this course to grow. Because if it doesn't happen, this course will die. Because I won't stick around and who the hell's going to want to invest in this? Who, who of that chorus is going to step up and direct that chorus into the C levels and the C minus levels? It had to be drastic and it had to be done. So I just said, fine. I'm going to do it my way until you get the balls to fire me. Because I said I quit and they said, you can't. So I just said, either you fire me or I'm going to do it my way. Two options. <coughs> so they didn't fire me and most of them left the chorus. And we went into contest that year with a whole new attitude of who we were. We knew who we were suddenly. We had a sense of ourselves. I spent a lot of time working on my vision and getting people like to be a team. And it made a world of difference. We came in like seventh or something like that, but we, or no, fourth, we came in fourth. And we knew, we knew we were on to something. Everybody in the course, it was surging in the public after we performed, we were just like, Oh my God, what happened to the chorus? Because the year before, we come seventh. With 26 singers, 28 singers. So then, the next year, we went to contest, and we scored 561. It's a good lead. And we qualified to go to this thing in Sweet Island. It's called the Harmony Classics. It's for the top five small choruses who are invited to this international competition. So we went to that, and you were there. Mm -hmm. And uh, and in order to become a master director, you have to score over like 1,200 points. Um, it's a double panel, 1,200 points. And we had only scored at the regional level, the equivalent would be like 1,122 is our highest score. So we got to international to this thing, and we're standing on stage and they're calling off, you know, the top five, and they call off, you know, the score of 1101. It's some other chorus. With a score of 1107, it's some other course. And I'm thinking to myself, I know I've made a risk in choosing the option that we chose. So we're either going to come first or we're going to come third. So uh, I called off third place, somebody else, with a score of 1112. And I'm thinking, OK, so you know, I won't become a master director. Of course, really wanted that for me. And, but you know, next time, next time. And this, they called a second place with a score of 1121. It was Fenton Lake scores. Boy, now coach. And, uh, and then, okay, we won. Everybody's happy. I know the chorus is like, oh my god, we won. And then they call off with a score of 1329. <laughs> <laughs> Stop them to voices. And I was just like, oh, okay. <laughs> oh my god. 1329. <laughs> Stop them. <laughs> Yeah, it was, it was like, 
what? We went from like 561 to basically 625 in the course of a year. And it is all because of this kind of leadership, really. And it's all because of this and then supplying nothing but high level coaching, high level education programs all the time. Not once, and that should do it for a year. All the time. And the management team was, we can't put any more money in. I'm like, you have to. That's what we do. The co this is a luxurious hobby that we do. Do we expect somebody else to pay for it? Is it a hobby? It's not a hobby. It's, we are professional volunteers. <laughs> yeah. We are professional volunteers. And we are changing the lives of the people in our chorus and the lives of the people that get to watch us. It's an awesome opportunity and an awesome experience to be a performer. We have a responsibility to sing up to our audience and give them the opportunity to have an emotional musical experience. We can't make them do anything. Just like I can't make my chorus do anything. I have to let them be attracted to it by setting an example. I'm not saying, see, I'm setting an example, but just by following my passion and give that to the audience. Like, when the sound leaves the mouth, all of the emotion, all of the color, all the power, all the spirit in it is the property of the ears that hear it. We can't change it. It's gone. So how much of the responsibility do I want to take for making sure that I've given everything I can give? And why would I want to do that? Oh, because it says so in my vision that I inspire people. That's one of my vision is to inspire people. So the goals become a consequence. Mm -hmm. They're not the point. They're the consequence of this other stuff that you're doing. And when that's achieved, oh, another goal will come along. Without doubt, because if you're doing this, this stuff is going to happen. Maybe not this year, maybe not that year. You've got no control over what anybody else does in a contest. But it'll happen. You know, it'll happen. You're doing the work. It'll come. It's that simple. Or we can grab desperately for these pieces of tin that will end up in a drawer somewhere and our egos will go, we won. Yay. Wah, 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 wah. <laughs> How far does that get you? How big does that make your heart feel? If it doesn't make your heart pump, it's not worth it. Maybe it for the wrong reason. So that's just, you know. And now my chorus, this past year, um, we were 38 on stage and we scored 678, which is A level. So in six years, five years, we've come from B minus to A level. So I think there's something to this vision stuff. <laughs> Seems to be working. Any questions? I mean, science is so yeah. Yeah. I'll tell you what, why don't we like go into little tiny groups and just talk about what I just talked about and see how you feel about it and what you want to do about it in your courses. Just like, let's take 10 minutes and just gather and discuss. Or maybe we discuss this way if you want. Okay. Mm -hmm. <laughs> no, but what I find at times that um, um, what I think also about leadership in front of the chorus is that, and that's what I tell people, that is what I found the hardest, is um, don't let them get away with it. So if they, you know, you have to have the courage to stop the chorus, even after two words. If mm -hmm. you have the urge to stop them, just stop them. And give them the tools so they can improve themselves. Mm -hmm. And I find that there is quite a lot of, that is a hard thing to learn, to make them stop singing and give them a tool, instead of let's be nice and let's make them sing to the end of the line. That's or all let's make them sing to the, to the end of the whatever, instead of 
do this again, and now yeah. try this, and mm -hmm. you know, and I and, and I sometimes find that with uh, uh, directors that I I see them struggle with that, mm -hmm. that it, it sometimes um, they lack the courage to stop the course, and even if they don't hear what is going on exactly, they'll break it up into parts. Mm -hmm. So this is and this is also got to do with leadership, daring to do that and make yourself vulnerable, like I'm a bit scared to do it, but I'm going to do it because I want to improve this sound. Well, that, is exactly, that is exactly what the difference between vision and goal and ego and vision. Like, no. if you're following something that's greater, it's like, wait a second, wait a second, there's something yes. better that we can do. Yes. They'll understand that. If you go, wait, that's not good enough. <clears throat> that's something you turn. That is you know, or if you're like afraid to stop them because you don't want to look bad, that's your ego. That's not their problem. It's your problem. Your responsibility is to direct the skills, talents, and abilities of these people and make something available to them so that the whole group can rise. Lift as we climb. There has to be an agreement between the group and the director on the vision. Mm -hmm. I mean, if you're not all in agreement, if, well, I, if I'm that's more ambitious, told. No. Yeah. No. This is what we yeah. call a benevolent dictatorship. Mm -hmm. It's not a democracy. No. Okay. It is not. You can't yeah, sit down with 30 true. people and expect 30 people to agree on a vision. You they cannot do it. They agree you have to, to take you as a director. Right. So, you're so you need they to take. They expect you to do it. They, you need to take into consideration, you know, some of their needs, but then put your vision down. Okay. Put it down and then present it in a way that they can do it. it. And what I do. I'm going to do this. Good? Yay! Yeah. 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 Okay. So, I'm just going to, let's break it down. Okay. See if I can translate this from Swedish. Something like that. We are a brilliant chorus of women musicians who aspire to the heights, the highest level of musical excellence and inspire deep emotional possibilities in their audience. That's our vision. So now when I was workshopping this with the chorus, you know, there were some people like, well, we gotta do a vision together and blah blah blah. We'll do a vision together. We'll do my vision together. So I'll say to them, and we go out into the woods for like two days every year and do nothing but workshop the vision and why each word is important. So I'll go to them and I'll say, okay, what does the word we mean? We. What is the responsibility of being part of we? 
everybody's eye. If we're going to be we, what do you have to do to make sure that we stay we? That means the person on the riser who sucks, who's right beside you, you need to take some responsibility for helping her not suck. Because we are we. Are. That's the word are me. It means we exist. We take up space. In your world, I'm taking up space right now. On the risers, she takes up her space. My space overlaps her space. We have an impact on one another. We're responsible for that relationship. And we exist. We don't shrink. We don't apologize. If we're going to have this kind of a space, we need to feel confident that we own that space. And the way to do that is through musical excellence, for one, and not compromising down. If you want to improve, you have to improve on your compromises, making fewer and fewer and fewer of them. Brilliant. Pretty straightforward. What is brilliant mean? Well, to a Swede, they've got these like this thing called Jantalogen in Sweden, where um, if you're good at something, you, you're not supposed to be like too good at it because it might make the person beside you feel bad. Um, it's ridiculous. Really it's it's it's, it's all insane. It's very good. Yeah. Yeah. So you need to talk about this in your groups too. But this is a reality. But this culture we're trying to develop here is based on performance, <coughs> not nationality. Got to step outside and go bigger, right? Brilliant. We shine. We are not afraid to radiate everything that we're doing. We're proud of it. We own it. We take up our space. This is ours. We don't want to push it on anyone. We just want to radiate on people. Radiate the love and the music. That's it. Okay. Chorus. Chorus means we are a group. Relates to we. But it means we sing. So my voice impacts your voice. So when you're not at rehearsal, we're not having a relationship. You're leaving me hanging. So my space and my voice overlap your space and your voice. And those things come together and make a third thing that impacts the two people that stand right in front, or the three people. And then that becomes its own relationship, and so on, and so on, and so on, in the chorus. Women, most of the women go, yeah, I'm a woman. Yeah, I'm a woman. Not a problem. I have a woman, hear me roar. They, you know, they know they're women, and I ask, what is the power that you feel about being a woman? And when you're on stage, how do you express that power of being a woman? Because one of the things women do is diminish who they are make themselves smaller, or apologize. Mm -hmm. So how do we get these women to not apologize and own who they are? Their space, their size, their sex, their talent. Everything is necessary for musical excellence to occur. Everything. Musicians, this is the one they always have a hard time with. They say, are you musicians? And they say, mm -hmm. I'm a singer, I sing. Baritone in a chorus. <laughs> Are you a singer? Well, I'm, I'm a singer. Are you a musician? <laughs> <laughs> what do you think a musician is? You know, somebody that gets paid for doing what they do. You know, somebody that's really good. So you don't think you're really good at what you do? Well, you know, okay. <laughs> <laughs> let's back this up like I have a woman hear me roar. I'm a woman, I take up space. I'm a woman, I take up space. Are you a musician? Well. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, so you've got to do a lot of linking around the word musician. If we all oh, treat ourselves like musicians, what's going to happen to the way we approach musical excellence in our education? We're going to believe in it. Yeah. We'll do it as a unit, yeah. right? And so, you, you know, getting them to agree to the fact that they are musicians and understanding that they sing for, for part harmony, which is not easy for everybody to do. The other thing about the audition process that I meant to uh, mention to you was sometimes that you will come in contact with a person that comes in that has a great voice 
and they're standing there in the quartet auditioning, and they sound great, and you can tell they're not listening at all to any of, anybody in the quartet. I refuse those people from my chorus. The divas, they don't listen. They want to hear themselves. That's not going to happen in four-part harmony. Four-part singing, but not in harmony. You want in-harmony singers. I've admitted people that don't have quite the vocal skills, but they have the ear and they have the sensation of how it's supposed to be. They're listening to the other parts. That's who I want in my chorus. Those are musicians. The ones who can hold it from themselves and not listen. Those are singers. No offense to singers, but musicians are people that use everything they've got to come up with some creative output that coincides and interacts with other people. That's a musician. It doesn't matter if you're getting paid for it or not. That is a musician. So, get them over the hurdle of a musician. Aspire, what is, what is the word aspire mean? Strive. It's, yeah, so it's yearning. Strive, you can strive for a goal. There's this longing, this aching for something you don't understand yet. That's to aspire. Like, I, I want to become this thing that I, it's so big, I don't know where to start, and I'm just going to go that way and hope it branches out. That's aspire. Highest level. Highest. When do you hit the highest? Never. <laughs> right. If you're busy aspiring, you will never hit the highest. But we always strive or aspire to hit the highest. That is what keeps us going that way and not that way. So if we're all looking at the same fog, we'll all go there somewhere. <laughs> and it becomes more defined as you go. If you think you uh, reach the highest level, you can better stop. Because it's not joy to do that. By the time you reach the highest level, you have grown so much and so smart as a musician, you can see all these other things you need to do next. Mm. Mm. Make no mistake, it will come. Mm. Highest level, musical excellence. That's a hard one too. People are like, oh, let's break it down. Musical. What does musical mean? If you are being musical, beyond it's beyond it's technique. Yeah. It's you are experience. You are experiencing something that is greater than the notes on the page mm -hmm. and the choreo and the costume and the technique and the director. You're experiencing some ethereal, you're experiencing a spiritual experience through sound. That's what I would call it, yeah. Mm -hmm. I call it that. A spiritual experience through sound and emotion. Mm -hmm. Excellence means we do that as often as possible. More and more consistent all the time. Inspire. Inspire. Inspiritu. To breathe in air. It's all about air. You give air, air is everywhere. It just like it fills the container that it's in. This is the container. This is air. You can't touch it. You can't see it. I can't own it. I can, I can breathe it and I can breathe it out. And so can you. Yeah, but we share it. We share it with our audience. We help them want to breathe more deeply. This is how I think of it. I want somebody sitting in contest, sitting in a chair, watching my group, and forgetting for the seven minutes that we're on stage, just completely forgetting, oh shit, right, I'm at a contest. When we're done, I want them to think, oh, right, it's contest. That's what I want. I want them to forget. I don't want them sitting there going, I don't know, the phrase any time as good as the group before, the a little weak. I want them having this like, out of body experience, this spiritual, musical experience. You can't put your hand on it, you can't touch it, but you can have it. And once you have it, you can't unhave it. You've touched someone. There have been, you know, people, I'll tell you a little quick, quick story. There was, um, I was coaching this quartet. I can't remember, Bob, her name was Bob. Babes of Barbershop. <laughs> and, um, the lead in that quartet had just joined the chorus. I ended up singing later in a quartet with her. She ended up singing bass. And we sang in a quartet. And 
came 12th at International. That was our big, our big score. And uh, but she was seeing the this quartet, and they came last. And my quartet at the time won. So her and I are walking down this aisle, and this older woman came up and said, "Oh my, 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 my! I just have to say thank you so much. That was so amazing." And my ego thinks it's about me, right? <laughs> Uh, thank you. <laughs> right? And then she turns to Judy and says, just seeing you up there and how hard you were working, it made me have the courage to maybe try and quartet next to her. She couldn't relate to me. She could relate to Judy, because Judy came last, and she can relate her level to that. She can't relate her level to me being first place. So what can we do as more successful courses to help to not alienate people from the process of their own excellence and keep that humility in what we do? We have to keep humility in what we do or it won't be musical. It just will not be musical and you will not have deep emotional possibilities for your audience. <coughs> and make some, you might say, and to, um, and to give deep emotional possibilities to the audience. has to be inspired. You can say, here it is, and then it's up to them to take it. You can't say, here, feel my pain, or feel, come to me, my melancholy baby, cuddle up. And how many, how many people have seen that face in a ballad? But what if I saying from a, a spirit of this, come to me, my melancholy baby, Love and don't be okay, can you feel that? Mm -hmm. It's much different than come to me, my melancholy baby. Cuddle up and don't be moved, which is what we see in 99% of the time. Mm -hmm. Are you agree with no effect? Hmm? No, but the, I mean, it's all I thought of the second time <coughs> was this. I just didn't think sense. of me so much. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Don't believe what you see. Yeah, and I can believe what I'm saying, almost anything that I'm saying, if I believe this and work from this every single week. Not, here's our vision, now it's in a book. Oh, what was our vision again? Every single week. We read this every week at Chorus. And we've trained the teams to work from this at every single rehearsal. In or out of. <laughs> so our new, instead of having, you know, the the uh, uh, the management team and the music team, and then under that you've got, you know, the treasurer and you know the the, the costume committee and the blah blah blah. And under here you've got your section leaders, and then you've got, you know, people that are tape checkers or whatever. We don't do that anymore because that's a hierarchy. And if you're working with something like this, a hierarchy is not going to work. Because everybody feels like they've got to answer to somebody at the chain. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Instead of we all have equal bearing responsibility. Mm -hmm. So ours is vision in the center. The next ring is membership. The members. And the next ring, the outside edge, is the management team and the music team. Now, if I want to make a decision for the chorus, it has to fit into the vision or I leave it out. It has to, or it's, there's no room for it. We have to set our priorities based on something. And we'll be doing the Christmas show and the CD over here and the oh, right, right, the singing Valentines and oh, 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 you know. I mean, you'll be putting on spinning plates. Da, 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 you know, you don't want to be doing that. that that's too diversified. And you, you know, we just don't have the resources. How many people here are in courses where it's like you can't get anybody to be on the management team? Nobody wants to do it anymore. Or, oh, she was that for five years. I mean, you know, it's because we're trying to do too much. You base things on a vision, things solve themselves. If everybody's thinking this way, 
They don't come to you with those shitty little problems anymore. They just don't. They don't come to you and say, so and so singing the wrong notes. Not in my course, they don't. They don't. They help each other solve a problem. They don't come to me and say, you know, well, um, like, here's a great example. What are we going to have on the Christmas program? We're having a, like a little Christmas show on the, on the 19th. What do you want us to do? And I looked straight at Rosie. She's my baritone section director. I looked at her and I said, do whatever you want. <laughs> really? Whatever I want? Just, yeah, make it happen. You know what to do. I don't care. You mean you'll just show up and direct the songs? Yep. Just, you know, let me know what I'm supposed to do. I don't need to take responsibility for shit. I don't need to take responsibility for it. And directors, we think that like the world is on our shoulders. I don't need to take responsibility for half the crap I think I do. I really don't. And if I let it go, somebody else will actually do it. Or we will or not. Well, well, it's my experience too. If you leave uh, things to others, uh, they feel happy mm -hmm. and it's, you have more freedom. You have yeah. more to pay attention on the things you need to so on the music and on. on now, this doesn't mean you should throw your hands at the no. air. No. You've got to train these people very cleverly and very closely. Closely. Yeah. Yeah. So, so that has to be a Otherwise, exactly. But it's like we share an experience within the chorus and within the people who are there. That's what I feel, right. at least in, with yeah. the harp singers, that we have come so close and we've been going through so much of all kinds of troubles like mm -hmm. that. And, and I think that uh, by now we have a sort of understanding of where we are and where we want to go. So we are very connected. Mm -hmm. and, um, this will help really bring it to life. And Absolutely, absolutely. And we have this. I think even if we haven't really put it down to paper, I think we share a view of ourselves and of uh, yeah. the the path that we're going. And mm -hmm. Because it is about the path that we're going. Try and formalize it. Because people can grab onto, you don't know if that person on the third row yeah. really gets it. That's right. No, no, that's true. You have to make sure they're all like, mm -hmm. right. And mm -hmm. if you read it every week mm -hmm. at chorus, everybody's in that mindset mm -hmm. when they start to work. They're not going to be thinking of, oh, I made another mistake. Well, bad mm -hmm. girl, bad girl, with the committee of assholes, you know. <laughs> you suck, you suck, you suck, you suck. It's like, you know, I can't, I can't direct the committee of assholes. I'm working with you here. Mm. You got to take some responsibility for it, right? So the thing about getting people involved is you find a person that might have a certain talent or ability, and instead of saying, "Want to be the costume chair?" because they'll go, "Huh?" and they will say, "No." But you say to them, "Hey, look, I was wondering. I need to pick some fabric out. Are you busy on Saturday? And you want to go and just try to find the right fabric for the new costume for me?" Oh, they, they can do that. And the next year, it's like, yeah, okay, well, I'm not sure what design. What do you think of these designs? Oh, well, that, desi well, that design's better. And uh, by year four, they're the costume chair. You don't say, who wants to take over uh, the social calendar? You go up to somebody and you say, can you make coffee this week? I'm feeling a little down. And you improve on your compromises. And all of a sudden, you've got a whole bunch of people that are going, I'll do it. I'll do it. I'll do it. Hey, I can do that. But you've got to go, especially to the voices and the people that you don't think are the ones that are going to step up. You see those people stepping up, the people that have some passion and some fire in them, they're going to go, hey, they're really going to drive things. So the other thing to, to keep in mind is, it's like a ladder, OK? These go towards this like fuzzy little who knows what the hell it is, vision, whatever, you know, that actually turns out to be quite specific, but it's still kind of untouchable. They'll never really run. How do I know that I've inspired somebody? Well, they might come up and say so. Yeah. Our, our mission in Seattle when we went to International was to, ins we knew we were onto something, we knew we sounded good, and we wanted to stand on that stage next to those 159 voice choruses and we wanted to speak to the little guy and say 
You don't have to be big to be good. Speak to the judges and say, you keep rewarding shouting singing from big groups. Here's a little group, clean, tight, precise, balanced, musical, artistic. What are you going to do with that? <laughs> and at the same time, saying to the small chorus people, because that makes up most of our organization, get off your ass and stop whining about being small. That's inspiring. That's inspiration. I get emails all the time about how the chorus has inspired people. And it's so touching because that's exactly what we wanted to do. All the time. I couldn't go two steps in Denver at, at, the, at the convention this year without somebody grabbing me. It was unreal. It was really, like seriously, really? I've had, who, who here knows the, the uh, group Crossroads? Yes. Mm -hmm. Jim Henry's, mm -hmm. okay? I just got this email uh, about three weeks ago from Fred Farrell, he's the tenor in the group, and he said, I'm writing on behalf of the entire quartet. We're sitting here right now watching your DVDs from your performance in Seattle. And we just want to let you know that we have no idea what the judges were thinking. If they don't know what clean, balanced musical singing is, then they don't deserve to be judges. Right. You should have easily been in the top three. Love to you always, Crossroads. <laughs> and I thought, now that's the kind of email you want to get, right? Yes. And they weren't talking about, you know, really, they weren't talking about where we placed. They were talking about the musicality that we brought. Mm -hmm. Right? And that's, so they, we, we inspired them on some level, which is really great, because they know exactly what they're doing, you know, with the craft. And they know how to look beyond the craft and see the heart behind it. No, I mean, knowing Jim, it, mm -hmm. you know, he's really made mm -hmm. that sort of stuff. So the, this stuff, the sides of the ladder, are going towards the vision. The small goals that we set, you know, let's learn this song, let's be off paper by such and such a date, all that stuff, those are these. Now you'll notice on the ladder that there's really never a rung there. Or there. It's kind of like, nobody can climb on those. Those are the, oh, right, let's do a massive CD project. Some, you know, somebody, somebody in the chorus is going to come up with like a, yeah, we do Christmas this year. Yeah. And you know, every director's thinking, I hate Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> it gets in the web every day. <laughs> All this work that we do on vocal production and then people show up going, Silent Night. <laughs> All their vocal production just goes out the window instantly. Oh, <laughs> in old town of Bethlehem. <laughs> 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 So, I hate Christmas. I hate it with a passion. I used to sing in a, uh, an a cappella trio. We sang Christmas carols for 12 years. I made so much money. But really, you know, I mean, how many years can you keep a straight face and sing some of this stuff? You know? <laughs> You know, we only do it to make money, because that is the time when we make money. We don't it, rehearse it. It is a Our first show. rehearsal is our first sing-out yeah. of the Christian oh, songs. Right. We That's just true. never rehearse them, we just sing them, and That's we do them every year again. And, and we yeah. never rehearse them. We do new, new songs, so we learn new songs, and then the next year we have a sing-out where we sing them. So we don't rehearse them. We just learn them, <laughs> sing them, and make money out of them. I sent my assistant director to all the Christmas singers. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I, yeah, right? I do this yeah, one, one this year. Yeah, right? She was the other. <laughs> yeah, five minutes. Um, yeah, Christmas carols. I, I, well, I sung, I sung with this woman. She sang bass. Her name was Carol. And so, I mean, after a few years, you're standing there singing like in this cathedral of a bank. It sounds great. Nobody's paying any attention to you. Anyway, you're standing there in your little Christmas outfits, and we start singing things like, and she was single for a very long time. Carol was single for a very long time. So all of a sudden, she starts singing, Yuletide Carol being done by a <laughs> So then for years, we just start singing like, you know, Marion Gay, you know. 
you can you can have some fun with Christmas carols if you can you know, <laughs> play with them a little bit. And people are like, what, what? Huh? <laughs> It'll just go. They're so used to hearing the same thing. Yeah. They will hear it. Yeah. They will hear it, and you'll be up there going, I love singing Christmas carols. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so we only have a few minutes left. Yeah. So we've gone over the idea of the vision and how you can set one for yourself and not based on goals. We've talked about the difference between goal and vision. Everybody get that? Mm -hmm. Okay, if you don't, why don't you have a vision for yourself as the directors in Holland Harmony? Why don't you guys set a, a vision for yourself? What do you need educationally? What do you see yourself doing as a body of directors in order to help lift up the entire Holland Harmony picture. Mm -hmm. How can you support one another? How can you believe in that thing and then take that further to your chorus in, inside your vision? So if your vision, all of your visions have a few things in common, then you can help each other lift up your individual choruses. The whole body lifts up. It's like, That's why we sit here. It's like, you know. Mm -hmm. yeah, we're taking it in passively now. And not helping each other. If you can, you can just call and say, I have an uptune, I need an uptune. What do you got in your uptune stack? You know? Or, I, you know, I'm having this trouble with this one member. How do you solve it? You know, what do you do? But go home and then write, break down what is it that you feel for your chorus? What do you feel is going to be the most incredible experience? they could have musically. And how do you put that into words in a way that you're right, like I wrote this about how I felt, but you can see I wrote it about us. And then I helped them believe it. Benevolent dictatorship. My vision won because I said so. But then I did it in such a way that they felt like it was theirs. If you can get, as a leader, if you can get somebody to do something in a way that makes them think that they thought about it themselves, you've won. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We're going to talk a little bit about vision in the closing session, too, with the other directors as well. But this is a, an awesome subject. Mm -hmm. If you have any questions at all, just shoot me a message. Become my friend on Facebook, because my life is all <laughs> Really, seriously. Who needs email? I do. I do. Well, you better read. Yeah. It's going that way, you know. Um, so, yeah, any quick questions? Can you think right now of a couple, just, I want you to write down, just a, like two words that you've taken from this session that you want to put in your vision. table and just like spit out what you've got. Okay, we'll go to uh, more education. Let's see more. More, to more education? Yeah. Is that um, a goal or a vision? That's a goal. Vision to get a goal. More education. More education is something you would do to go further. But what's that thing that's further? <coughs> You know what I mean? Yeah. Think about it. I want to feel music. Feel music. Okay, and you can explore that problem even further. What does that really mean and how? How do you really 
sense that. So, because feel the music is a good start, but is it specific enough for them to understand what that means? I don't think so. You've got to explain feel and music. And if you can boil it down to something, you know, uh, I would say um, to have themselves to have an emotional experience through sound. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, there you go. Sound and expression. Yeah, well, there you go. So you'll come up with, you know, how to flush that out. That's a good one. Touch people's hearts. No, yeah. Mm -hmm. Touch people's hearts. Touch people's hearts. And you'll figure out how to do that through higher level of musicianship. That way the audience doesn't have to filter out all of the crap. That's how you're going to touch people's hearts, to get all of that noise out of the way. And you? Too full. Well, like, <laughs> it'll come. I'll well, just fire the possibilities of the colors. Yeah, that's a really good one, isn't it? To share and believe. Share, share and believe. believe. That's good. I wrote down, sing together. Sing together. Yeah, so you're looking at unity, right? Mm. So I would put unity as one word. Mm. Or team, or something like that. Sharing the, the vision with the group. Mm. Mm -hmm. That's something I, I will talk about. Yeah. Good. Yeah. Uh, explore what is in there. What's in, with, within the group? Explore what's within. Yeah, the, right. power, the sources, because there's more in it than we let out at the moment. Right. So there's a way that you can word that that makes them feel that they want to do that. Yeah. Are we done? We're here. Okay. We're Good. One second. Oh, I wrote that. Joy. 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 Good one. Like. Fulfilling, like making your heart sing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Joy works in all sorts of ways. Space and brilliance. Mm -hmm. Good. 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 What, what do you say? Inspire, inspire. Yeah. aspire. Yeah. Good words, yeah. Make people happy. So yeah, of course. Or in. Yeah. Making other people happy makes me happy. That's how it works. Cool. We got a head start on the video. It's at all at 5 o'clock. 5 o'clock, okay. So, let's wrap this up. So, for those of you who have just joined in, we've been talking about the idea of setting a vision for ourselves and how we can use that vision to expand the idea of, of vision in our chorus and build a stronger culture within our chorus. Stronger culture usually uh, will determine whether or not we have uh, a better climate for working together as a team. So I've shared with um, the directors that were here before you, this is the vision statement from my chorus. It's slightly different in Swedish, it has a different impact, but it's the basic idea. And it, I've underlined certain words. Uh, after you've set a vision, you go through the vision with people in your chorus, word by word, and you, you describe and discuss what does this word mean. Now, let's dial it back just a second. I'll recap some of this for the people who have already got this. I want to recap it for the other people. There's a difference between a vision and a goal. Now, a goal is something you set that can be achieved, done, and put away with. And then you set a new one. That's a goal. The vision is something like a fog of this idea that you you want to reach, by the time you reach it, 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 it just kind of keeps 
going up and up and up. You can't ever quite grab it, but it's the thing that keeps you moving in the direction of excellence. Does this make sense? Mm -hmm. So if you're setting a vision of this kind of a nature, then anything that you do in your chorus has to fit into that vision. If it doesn't fit into achieving that vision or reaching that vision, leave it out. Like, here's our vision. We want to do all of these things. And, you know, maybe one of the things in here is, oh yeah, somebody has decided that what they want to do is do um, singing valentines. Okay? Now we know, do we have the time to rehearse the singing valentines? Is it going to be at a level of musical excellence that matches the rest of our repertoire? <clears throat> if it can't be that, either make it match or let it go. But don't go halfway. Because halfway just dilutes everybody's resources and you don't really get that much out of it anyway. The idea is that we want to be musically excellent and evoke or inspire deep emotional possibilities inside of our, in, in our audience's hearts. Can I ask them a question? Sure. <clears throat> How many of you in your chorus have a vision statement? Show of hands, a vision statement. Vision statement, a mission statement. Any kind of statement. I don't think they do the statement. Well, it's not like 80 percent of your repertoire has to be Bob's. It's something I think we have something like that, but okay. that's it. Well, I think this basic idea of this is very nice to have like one sentence that, that defines what your chorus is about. Some choruses want to be fun choruses. We've encountered a couple of those in Holland Harmony that you know they're not looking to get an 80. They're not looking to win the contest. They want to have fun. You know, there are others that are really driven to excellence, etc. But what what is your course? It's a very nice little discussion to have sometime. Maybe a little 30 minute meeting where you, you say, okay, two weeks from now we're going to meet at nine o'clock after the break and talk about this. But these are very helpful. <coughs> Vision statements would yeah. really help. And one of the reasons it helps is that if every member understands what it is, then they stop asking you questions that they can answer themselves. <coughs> so should we go to the convention? <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. It's like, of course we should go to the convention. That's where our best audience is. They get us. They know what we do. Why wouldn't we want to perform for them? For God's sake. Really. We want to go to an old folks' home and perform there instead where people don't give a shit? Actually, they no, do. They, they do. love all songs. Yeah. Well, old, old, old <laughs> folks actually, they do. There's one across from one yeah. But um, where they don't really get the details. Like, it's nice that they really like you, but doesn't it feel better if they know what you're doing and they go, I really like you? Doesn't it feel a little bit better? Yeah. Yeah, it does. And it, it encourages us to work harder next year. But the idea of working with a vision, like, I've had this, this one tenor in my chorus. She was having a really hard time with one passage of music. And she kept giving up and giving up and giving up. And in her chorus notebook, she turned it open. And there was, inside our chorus notebooks, we have our vision printed. She turned it open and she said, we are a brilliant chorus of women musicians. And she stopped for a second. She looked at this piece of music that was really hard. And she said, I can do this. It says right here that I am brilliant. <laughs> that I am a musician. <laughs> I can do this. We are Dutch people. Swedish people aren't that much different. <laughs> I'll tell you what, they really are. <coughs> so it gives, the thing that, that I like about a vision statement is it gives the individual permission to not be perfect, mm -hmm. but to do their best. Mm -hmm. Goals make people feel like they have to be better. A vision lets people have the room to be better. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. It creates space. It's like, oh, I fell down. Oh, I stood up. 
you know? Mm -hmm. Imagine, people are so afraid of falling down, they forget that they can actually stand up again. Mm -hmm. um, somebody sent me a card recently, it said, I'll be there to catch you when you fall. Signed, the floor. <laughs> <laughs> bathroom mirror at home I have a little sticker, a very tiny one, because this means you have to eliminate your sense of ego and you have to open your heart to possibility. You can't lead by pushing rope, but you can pull it and it will still do what you want if you know how to let it have the opportunity to go, yeah, pull me. Then they can think as individuals and still go together. To the bright light, the vision. Um, I have a sticker on my mirror at home that says, and I see it every morning when I brush my teeth and looking at the sticker and says, You are looking at the problem. Try to duck to see if somebody else. Yeah. You know, you're really the problem. And what I like about that <coughs> statement is that I'm looking at it thinking, yeah, it's true. My ego is huge, huge. I got another card in the mail. In the mail, somebody actually mailed me a card. Can you believe it? They didn't like attach it to an email. They mailed me a card, and it had this guy standing there introducing this person into his house. And he looked down, and there was a cat, a dog, and this huge monster. He said, I'd like you to meet my cat, and my dog, and my ego. <laughs> <laughs> you know, we have to learn how to not take ourselves so seriously, number one. Be more generous with the heart, forgiving of people that make mistakes. Because remember, the word fail, F-A-I-L. That's right. I'm dyslexic. Right now. I'm running upside down and sideways. This could be bad. Fail is first attempt in learning. Yes, <laughs> for we had a little open forum in our class <clears throat> discussing the weekend a little bit and just what we got out of the weekend. So I wanted to switch gears a little before we run out of time. I don't need to. Oh, I get to step So this is just if you want to make some comments or maybe what you learned, uh, some perception you had. Something that really worked today or worked yesterday, something that would uh, that, that you might want to share with us. Where to start? <gasps> and you can do it in Netherlands if you want. It's okay. Well, it's so much. Um, I don't know where to start. Try to relax. <laughs> Try to relax. <laughs> what I learned last year, what I learned this weekend, I. Some things happened, and there was a musical problem in my head coming up for my own course. I said, oh, I can fix it with that, and I can fix that with that. And so I got so many tools, so that's the reason why my head's completely full. There's nothing coming in and in inside, and there's nothing coming out at the moment. But I saw things as, oh, I can fix that problem with that, mm -hmm. and I can fix that problem with that. So. It's a little toolbox. Yeah, you know, no, got it's a big toolbox. Big toolbox. Yeah, it's, big it's a cabinet. Yeah. <laughs> rolling, rolling cabinet. Snap on your head. Okay, having an, adding to our toolbox. And meeting, meeting new people, new colleagues, uh, as directors, and mm -hmm. uh, learning from them. Yeah. Learning new things of them, and uh, it's it's a reminder because it's not the same thing. Yeah. Things of them, and a reminder because I was in a, a little bit um, uh, in a dip. And now it came out, I said, oh, there's so much happening in barbershop uh, land. And it gave me just a warm feeling. And I thought, come on, we'll go on and get to our next goal. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. 
Ik ga een big tool ook zien. Big tool. Big tool. Dan zien we, we hebben een flippers. Ja, die flippers. Uh, 
Now I have to do it. <laughs> Let them project yeah. out their energy. Yeah. Out. So, you know, I was always trying mm -hmm. to jump into the chorus mm -hmm. to go mm -hmm. with them. Right. To, uh, to, um, uh, you know, to, uh, yeah. Pull that, Suck it out. Yeah, pull, out. Yeah, to pull everything out of it. So I track it. I have to let it go. I have to let it go. Well, I learned to do less with it. More with less. Yeah. 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 More with less. Yeah. 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 More with less. Yeah. Yeah. I learned about the layers. How everything builds up from, from breathing. The vocals, it's the pronunciation. And you never may let the rhythm fall down, uh, and then you go to the melody and to the harmonics. And you may, may never forget about the breathing, and they shall never forget about the breathing. And then you go into the technique of the rhythm and stuff. And in the end stage, when they all got this, you may still feel the energy, and there you are, and that's barbershop. <laughs> but forgetting about the breathing or about the, the, the <coughs> So badly for the chorus, you can't, you can't go to the energy level. And that's, that's we had the advantage of they started with Stuart yesterday, <clears throat> the beginning. So Stuart did the first warm up, the breathing into the tone, into the vowels, into the resonance, and then they got me today doing a different approach to it. But based on keeping the ideas from the warm up, the breathing, the vowel matching, the open throated singing, through the rehearsal. <clears throat> Don't let it ever go. So you have to remind them about breathing. You have to match the vowels at 9 o'clock, at 10 o'clock. So that the, the warm-up is not a separate place. Here's the warm-up, here's the rehearsal. But it's part of that whole continuous flow of the evening. Especially that breath control. They get tired, they start to lose it. It's up to us to go and... We have someone in our group that says, just one of who's that? Who is that? Oh, okay. I won't say who it is. She does have purple and big hair. <laughs> but she kind of gets them doing this stuff, you know. Because it gets tiring for the chorus members to stand on the riser so long. You know, so, I mean, things like that. This, they're all, there's all these levels. From the highest vision level down to the breath support. And everything in between. That's all part of our, our job as directors. We are the ones that lead those things. We are the ones that are aware of them, that think about them, that plan them and they put them into action. And the chorus <coughs> members really appreciate it when we do. It's important. All of these things are important. Mm -hmm. Every little level, every little layer yeah. is important. I have to say that this is one of the, what he's hitting on right now is exactly why a vision can run your entire chorus. If you've got a chorus member that's struggling with breathing, they're going to go, I don't know, I can't do it. If you're setting goals, they'll go up to somebody and I, I can't, I just can't do it. I can't make that phrase, can't do it, I'm not going to do it. I'm going to breathe here in the middle of the phrase. That's what I'm going to do. Yeah. Now, if they're thinking that way, that's what's going to happen. But if they're thinking this way, I'm a brilliant member, I'm a musician, and I work at my highest musical level. So what am I going to do with my breathing problem? I'm going to find a solution to it. That's mm -hmm. what I'm going to do. Every single level attached to that gets everybody going that way. And you don't have to, you know, la, 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 spin the plates, put up the campfires. <laughs> and everybody's like, oh, right, I'll put my campfire over here. We're going that way. They want to be on the train because it's exciting. <clears throat> it's based on passion, not ego. Medals are about ego. Sorry to say it, but they really are. They're about, oh, yay! So have to go to work on Monday. <laughs> right? But somebody from the back row going, believe it. I felt like this. You're like, and you'll remember that forever. You'll feel like I contributed something to humanity forever, forever. Because you said, I'm going to make this phrase. I'm going to make it. And you help people in your chorus understand that that simple act of that note that you didn't think you could get, let's find the right placement for you so you can get it. That is that. That is something that somebody in the audience is going to go, that was awesome. Did you, hear, did, you, did you hear that overtone on that chord? And that could be because you did that note right. Just that note. 
Now add all those things together, and you're going to move up. You're going to lift as we climb. That's our job to help our forces lift as we climb. Everybody goes together. Yeah. So. What she said. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that was a good one. I like that. One. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay. Any last minute comments? We're down to our last minute or two. Last minute comments, questions, things that we haven't covered. Are you toast? No, I'm thinking of a, of a sort of conclusion. You said the last sentence of the last book. So it's the mind that makes you sing, and perhaps not so much the body. No, it is the body. Well, it's, it's, you know, it's, it's a combination. It's whole, this is it's organic. organic. You can't really separate. No. But, it's it's right. but this, yeah, attitude comes attitude. out of this. Yeah. Attitude is, is a big key. I think that is part. Yeah. Yeah. Feeling yeah. confident yeah. and mm -hmm. it's uh, what your passion is. You've got to be true to your passion. They asked me when I first joined my chorus, they said, you know, well, we need you to do these things and these things and these things. And I, I can't unsee what I feel. I cannot unsee my vision. I can't, I just can't. I can't pretend it's not there so that you can make coffee at 8.15. Mm -hmm. I can't. It's, it's not me. You need somebody to do that, it's another director. Mm -hmm. But you've got to find out what it really is. <coughs> And for what it is for you, it might be different. So that's why these, you know, this is something for Holland Harmony to think about. Simple sentence, just one sentence. Think about it for your course, whether you want to try this or not. Not this one, it would be one that you write. Write it in Dutch. I could put it in Swedish for you. Swedish, you know, we could French, German. Okay. Why don't we give them. Why don't we give them a round of applause?